Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bedrock Guide. Oh, we're back over here today at our Dripstone Farm. Just gonna check out what we've got so far. Oh, it's been chugging along. Two and a half stacks, just over two and a half stacks of pointed dripstone, which means we can proceed with the project today as planned. But in here, we've got some new life. Ho oh, ho, look at all these guys. Hello, who are you? Pirates. Uh, pirates with no names. I suppose we should give these guys some names, right? Like One-Eyed Larry, One-Armed Bob, Two-Teeth Thomas. <laughs> nah, we're not gonna name them anything silly like that. Uh, unless the, the patrons of my community have silly names and that's up to them. That's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I've got a bunch of name tags in my inventory. We're gonna go grab an anvil and we are going to name tag every single one of these pirates after one of my active patrons in the Patreon community. So if you'd like to be immortalized and live in this world forever, be sure to go check out my Patreon. Would appreciate the support. And not only that, you get access to The Nest, my Patreon server that just relaunched a few weeks ago at this point. We're still pretty early in the game, so it's not too late to jump in. Hope to see you there. Okay, everybody in here has got a name officially assigned to them. Some of my favorites. We got, uh, we got Westy over here with the TNT. If you don't know what that's about, you're missing out. You should be joining my live streams. Over here, we got Grumpy Ref pushing Master TMO down a waterfall. Uh, it, just rude, man. Why gotta be so grumpy? We got Swanky Potato and Jans Drew. Swanky Jans guarding the diamonds because uh, they were the owners of the casino on the previous iteration of the nest. So it makes sense that they would be guarding the valuables. And then let's see, what else do we have? Over here, we've got like uh, Nogri and Zero Cruel holding up the redstone because they always jump in and help me out. So many more names that we can't go over because there's like 43 of them in here. Uh, but yeah, tons of fun. If you want to have your name in here, check out the Patreon. But on over here to our project for today. I've gone into the nether and we have six full shulker boxes of lava buckets and that's only about half of what we need to fuel this farm then we've got all of our redstone supplies bunch of cauldrons bunch of pistons bunch of redstone now we just need to figure out where this thing's gonna sit ah yeah slight problem ain't gonna fit in here so plan b you know i wasn't originally planning on using this space but this looks like a good spot it's right below the gold farm uh it's right above the area that the super smelter is going to be which we're going to tie this into that at some point point. Uh, and the bridge that leads to nowhere will finally lead to somewhere uh other than our secret entrance so we can have like our secret entrance with a piston door here or something like that uh and, an, and a pathway that leads on around to the lava farm did you see that <laughs> Oh, that goat is leaping up on top of trees. My word. We got to be careful while we're over here. These guys are going to start punching us. We got llamas all over the... Llamas. Llamas. We got llamas all over the place. Llamas in lava. Look out. Well, that's a lot of space. I had the dimensions wrong at first. It's actually even bigger uh, by just a small amount. This is a 23 by 29 space that we've dug out for our lava farm and we're going to start right over here not quite in the corner but one block over from the corner on this outer edge this will technically be the entrance to the farm and the afk spot will be like right here or potentially somewhere along here but we're going to start right here with a regular piston right on the edge and place it facing inward toward the back side of the farm then we're going to count out 12 cauldrons so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 and the reason why we are going 12 out is because that is the maximum number of blocks that a piston can push before it gets stuck. So let's let's show you really quick. We got a redstone block here. If we place the redstone block down, boom, it'll push all of those forward and that'll be just fine. Let's give this a little reset. There's 12 cauldrons. We'll add a 13th to the edge Then we'll go down here and we'll say, boom, why isn't it moving? That's just the way it works. So 12 is our max number. Just keep that in mind. It's pretty important. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that this mechanic works in Java. I think that pushing containers like chests and cauldrons and things like that are exclusive to Bedrock. So yet again, another really cool feature 
that we Bedrock players have. Super, super cool stuff. But it's not enough just to push these cauldrons in a straight line like this. We have to push the cauldrons so that they rotate around this entire dugout area. Let's say that this is the starting line. And let's say that we put a piece of deep slate here. Let's say this deep slate gets pushed forward. We want it to get pushed forward all the way weaving around this dugout area until it comes all the way back to this starting line at this piston. So because we can only push 12 cauldrons at a time, we're a little bit limited on how we can do this. So we're going to push these things in short spurts and weave them in and out throughout this cave. So we've got another piston right here, but we're gonna leave this empty because when this piston pushes these cauldrons forward, this one will end up here and then it will get pushed forward. So then this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We're gonna put another piston right here, and this piston and this piston will fire at the same time so that this line gets pushed forward. This one stays still, but this piston pushes this one out of the way so that there are never any more than 12 cauldrons in any single one line. Some of the lines that we're gonna weave in and out of here, as you'll see, will have fewer than 12 cauldrons, but 12 is our maximum. So we need to make sure that every other piston actually has a blank space next to it to allow for this thing to rotate properly. So then at this point, we're gonna start weaving it in and out of this little section right here, but we need to leave a one block gap. We'll go ahead and put one cauldron right here, one piston right there, and we'll leave that blank because there is a cauldron right there. And we'll go like this all the way down to the end of the line. And we'll just kind of keep weaving this in and out. So because this is gonna take a really long time to format this and get everything lined up correctly, I'm not actually gonna walk you through every little weave and bob, but this is just kind of the principle that you need to follow. And if I can remember, I'll try to put a graphic of the farm with maybe some dimensions typed out onto it so you can at least see what the exact dimensions of the farm are. And we'll try to go over it a little bit at the end as well well. So from here, we just kind of need to fill in the rest of this space with pistons and cauldrons. And if there's anything else important that I feel needs pointed out, we'll jump back in and we'll talk about it. All right, just a little quick cut in here. You can see that we've got a couple of lanes of cauldrons already in place, but we are about to bend this around to send it onto this side of the room to start filling in this part of the farm. But before we can do that, you remember the 12 block limit that we talked about with our piston pushing. In order to get past this last piston here to start pushing cauldrons this direction, uh, we actually have to cut in two blocks early on this side. So we'll go ahead and place one right here. We'll skip this one, but we'll place our piston down right here instead of on this back line where the rest of the pistons have been so far. And then we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11. And then this one, once it gets pushed into place, will be 12. And that will allow us to start pushing cauldrons this direction. So we can place one right here and we can start filling this in. Why, oh why? is simple math so difficult. Uh, so I didn't leave enough space on this side. I counted wrong. It's 30 blocks wide instead of 29. So it's 30 by 23. Yeah, math is hard sometimes when you're me with a bird brain. As you can see, these cauldrons right here are actually going perpendicular to these cauldrons, uh, and it'll kind of weave in and out like that to where uh, this set of cauldrons will go the same direction as these, and this set of cauldrons will go the same direction as the ones that are gonna go here. They have to alternate like that so that we can weave it in and out, uh, so that it'll eventually meet back up right at the starting point. So we're a little over halfway done with the cauldron placement. This is probably the most nerve wracking part of doing a large project like this, where you've got specific gaps in between uh, your cauldrons, making sure that you are lined up for the finish line. And thankfully we are. So all we gotta do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and 11. Huh. This is the bad part. Now we got to figure out where we missed because every other one should be blank. But this one and this one both have cauldrons, which means we missed one. So oh, no, 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 no. Doofus. Blue Jay. Brains. Where are your brains? There we go. There's the gap. That's the one that's supposed to be missing, and that one is definitely okay to have a cauldron there still. So we did this exactly correctly. Um, lesson learned, never second guess myself, unless I'm wrong. 
Okay, so all of our cauldrons and pistons are in place. Uh, you might notice as well, there's water in these now. I did not put this there. It rained, but that's kind of an interesting fact about cauldrons. If you leave them outside in the rain, or if we took them high enough to put them on top of the mountain and left them out in the snow, uh, these will actually fill up with water or powdered snow, respectively, depending on which type of precipitation is falling on top of them. Just another really cool mechanic about how cauldrons operate in Minecraft. Next, what do we gotta do? We gotta go underneath all of these cauldrons and dig some space out to put all of our circuitry. Why didn't we do that first, you must ask? Uh, because I didn't wanna have to worry about figuring out where to place the cauldrons uh, in midair, because placing cauldrons in midair is possible, but it's just a little bit more tedious. So let's get to digging. Let's clear out some space for some redstone. All right, next thing we need to do now that we've dug out some space underneath here is to go underneath every piston and we need to place one block. This is how each of these pistons is going to be powered. Just some very basic knowledge about redstone. If you run a redstone signal into a solid block, it does power the block and subsequently anything that's connected to the block. So if we have a redstone torch on the side, uh, powering this block will depower the redstone torch. But because we have a piston here, powering this block will power the piston and cause it to extend and then once it's depowered it will retract we now have blocks underneath every single piston in the feed tape and what we're going to do is we've got a block right here with a lever that does absolutely nothing just yet but that's going to activate this farm to start rotating the cauldrons around the entire area so the way that we activate this is by placing a piece of redstone directly underneath the block that the switch powers. And you can see when we flip the lever, that redstone dust comes alive. Then we can run this line all the way down here. This is 15 blocks away from the start of the lever. So we're gonna place a repeater down to carry that signal on further. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a comparator right here. And then we're going to right click it to put in comparison mode. And then we're just gonna run a redstone line directly into it, which when we complete the circuit, watch this, we've got some flicker action going on right here. And this is what is going to tick the pistons on and off. Now we need to get power to the pistons and that's the next tricky step because there's a ton of them under here and there's not a whole lot of space. So I think I'm actually gonna dig the rest of this out and then we'll wire it up and then we're about ready to get our lava all set up. Wow, I did not realize how close we were to our actual cave. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to be careful. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Uh, this is uh, uh, compaction at its finest. Uh, we butted this farm right up against the drop chute for the gold farm. Uh, talk about making the most of the space we have available to us, right? Uh, we couldn't have moved this over any farther without interfering with that farm. Wow, we're just packing this stuff in here, huh? All right, well, carry on. All right, we've got a little more room to work with now, and now we can start spreading the signal. It all starts at this point, but we gotta make sure that we evenly distribute the signal to every single module of this farm so that all of the pistons fire in the correct sequence and at the same time. Basically, we want pistons that have a cauldron next to them to fire first, and then pistons that don't have a cauldron next to them to wait until one appears and then to push forward. If you don't have this all wired up correctly and timed correctly, the entire thing will break and cauldrons will just kind of start flying around um, and not going exactly where you want them to. Here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna start with these pistons up here that are kind of along this line and we might group in this one and that one uh, at the same time. So what we're gonna do is we're going to place a couple of blocks right here. We'll run the redstone signal forward, but we're actually gonna break the signal there and we're gonna put a repeater. This is to ensure that we can get to all of the blocks that we're trying to connect. So next we can go up from here. We'll power this block and then we'll just start running it over to where it connects up with these so we'll make sure to leave a one block gap in between those blocks and this line right here and the reason for that is because we do need repeaters to go into these blocks so just general placement practices and here's where we're going to benefit from a little bit of scaffolding because we can't actually get up underneath these now because uh we're at head height so what we can do is we can start here and we can run redstone dust here here and all the way across and we need to make sure that we're counting along the way uh, because we can't actually test this just yet without firing off the pistons. 
Uh, and, and if we do fire off the pistons one at a time before this farm is ready, that's going to result in disaster. So uh, this is the most tedious part of the entire farm. So one, two, three, four, five, six to that point. And then spreading this direction, we should have more than enough. We should go seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So that reaches all the way to the farthest piston. We got more than enough signal strength. So then what we'll do is we will run a repeater right here. And because this one does have a cauldron next to it, we will leave the repeater on one tick. Absolutely one of the most important things about this farm. One tick for repeaters that have cauldrons next to them. And then over on this one, you can see there is no cauldron next to this piston. It is an empty space. We're going to put a repeater right here and it needs to be set to four ticks. If this is not on four and that one's not on one, rest assured the entire thing will collapse on itself and not function. You'll have to rip out all the cauldrons. It'll be a big mess. You just don't want to have to reset the thing. All right, so one and four, one and four. Don't forget one and four. So that's pretty much it for the rest of the circuitry. We have to make our way around to the rest of these pistons. And anytime we make another branch, uh, because we're not gonna connect this line up to all of these pistons because the signal strength won't reach that far. Uh, but anytime we branch off of this clock, we have to make sure that before we go into the specific branch itself, there has to be a repeater. Uh, otherwise, those timings will not line up with these timings. So let's say we run this redstone dust straight up into this piston that's not going to work because that piston will actually fire one tick before uh, this entire module will fire off uh, so timings will not be lined up as well so uh, anytime you set off a new branch you have to have a repeater set to one tick so you don't break the farm okay makes sense you know i could leave out the next part here and we just pretend like everything went perfectly the first time but nobody would believe that literally nobody hey look all of our cauldrons are gone <laughs> uh we had a bit of a problem uh the problem was i was missing a couple of pistons in a few different places that i don't know how they went missing i was pretty sure i double checked everything and a few of the pistons that were there uh didn't have blocks or redstone wired up to them so uh, as you can imagine the entire thing broke very quickly um and we had to rip it all apart and expose all the wiring uh, but I think we're good now. So, check this out. Oh, it's beautiful! Oh, it's so noisy and obnoxious, but it's amazing. Here's what we got going on here. I've dipped down a few areas like this because uh, when you run redstone directly next to a block like this that's being powered, for instance, by this repeater, uh, it will also power this redstone line, creating an infinite loop of power. So that's a problem when you're trying to flicker things on and off. Uh, and it, as you can see, it, it affects pretty much everything up here. Uh, so anytime we had a redstone line come across a block like this, we dipped it down one lower and then brought it back up when it was clear out of the way. There's that. And then as we mentioned before, anytime we've got a redstone line coming out of this clock down here, so for example, this guy right here, before it hits the wings uh, where the pistons are fed by the individual repeaters, there is a master repeater uh, that will delay one tick for the entire wing. And the main purpose of that is just to extend the signal because these are much farther than 15 blocks from the clock. So we needed a way, holy smokes, that's loud one moment anyway as i was saying we have master repeaters that basically extend the signal because they can't reach uh, all the way from the clock we need a way to boost that signal to the rest of the repeaters and pistons so that this thing will actually work and the reason why we've gone ahead and flipped this lever on like this is to kind of take a little bird's eye view here and make sure that every piston in the farm is actually firing off we got all the flickering, that's a good sign. The only thing that shouldn't be flickering is this solid power line going to the redstone clock. And I think at this point, we're pretty safe to go ahead and put the cauldrons back in place and we'll cross our fingers and hope this thing works. If it doesn't, you'll be the first to know. And if I did it correctly, it's up in the air still. All the stuff should work. Uh, and we've got this purple concrete block here as a marker uh, to make sure that this is rotating around 
like it should. So here we go in three, two, one, blast off. There it goes. There goes the purple concrete block racing around the track. <laughs> oh, this is great. It's very loud still, but it is great, great news. This is working as expected, uh, but I am going to let this thing run all the way around just to make sure there's no uh, breaks in the system. Uh, there shouldn't be, but we're going to let that purple block go all the way around and let it come back to the starting point right here. Hey, 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 this is a good sign. It's almost back. Wouldn't it be just hilarious if this thing broke? right before it got back it shouldn't though i think we're good i think we're good and there it is yeah perfect okay so we know that this thing works we can go ahead and bust this out because we don't want to lose any ounce of efficiency at all so we'll put a cauldron back in there now it's time to go get some dripstone and some blocks and start filling this thing in Let's do it. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to trace the entire path around here where the cauldrons are going to go. And that means the, the spots that have gaps in them, too. We're not going to skip those. We're going to cover every last place that will ever touch a cauldron with a one block gap. And the reason why is because we're going to go ahead and place pointed dripstone directly underneath these blocks so that they are directly touching the cauldrons. Once there is lava on top of these blocks, the lava will transfer down into the pointed dripstone and drip, drip, drip on into the cauldrons. And bada bing, bada boom, we've got ourselves an infinite lava farm. Again, never been possible in the game before this update. This is absolutely amazing. And it's going to make a really great fuel source for our super smelter. Now you're saying, Blue Jay, you've already got a, a fuel source for your super smelter. You got that bamboo farm you built a while back. It's super great. Yeah, it's not really that great. I mean, it is. It's a great bamboo farm, uh, but not to fuel a super smelter. It's just not enough. We we kept running out. So uh, we're going to shift gears on that. And we're going to make our lava, our infinite lava, our fuel source from now on. So there you go. I think this is a good time to test out one of the brand new features of the Caves and Cliffs update. Spyglass time. Talk about a bird's eye view up here. Look at this. We can see our basalt farm from here. We can see the top of our pirate ship. We can see the gold farm. We can even see the creeper farm. Look at the detail. <laughs> There's the platform. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. We can see the fish farm. We can see everything from here. Can we see Prowl stuff? Where's his, where's his base? I think it's just over that horizon and we can't quite see it because it's out of render distance, but check it out. We've got all of the black stone in place and it looks amazing. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to go down here and finish digging out the roof uh, so that we can actually get the lava on top of this stuff. <laughs> it's just hilarious how much this thing looks like a maze. And I mean, technically it, it, it kind of operates like one, except for there's only one uh, route and there's no way in or out. So it's like the maze of your nightmares filled with lava. We are in the ideal situation now where we can start finishing off the main mechanics of this farm. I've got my pointed dripstone here. Let's go ahead and grab a couple stacks of it. And uh, all we need to do is start going and placing it underneath all of this blackstone until the entire farm is completely filled in. Look at all of that pointed dripstone. That is nearly 300 pieces, uh, over four and a half, almost five stacks of pointed dripstone to fill this entire area. We have like seven pieces left over. Uh, so hopefully our farm will continue to do its work uh, to, to grow some more dripstone so we can use it for decorations and things like that around the place. But now for the exciting part, we're gonna go grab all of this lava and we're gonna start seeding this farm. And you should see, like right now, you see a little bit of water droplets. That's just the default state for dripstone. Uh, you should see that start to change. Uh, so let's go ahead and place the lava here. 
We'll get a couple more buckets and we'll make sure every last one of these is a lava source. And if we go down here, look at that beauty right there. We got orange droplets now going into the cauldrons and soon, very soon, we should have full cauldrons of lava. So what my hope is by the time we run out of lava filling up half of the farm, hopefully some of these cauldrons will have filled up and we can just go quickly refill our empty buckets and keep going and hopefully there won't be too much of a gap in between running out of buckets and finishing the farm oh look 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 look! we've already got one cauldron one cauldron has lava in it look 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 Ooh. okay so the lava source i thought was right here i don't think there is one right there let me double check this is the cauldron that's filled up uh so i guess you don't have to do that you don't have to have full lava sources all the way around just fill in what you need to to have lava running all the way around and you should be good to go but we are going to do this the way that i think it should be done we're going to have lava sources all the way around and i'll see you when that is done um goat look out well that's definitely something Holy moly, that's a lot of lava <laughs> and a lot of light. Look at this. Okay, the entire thing is completely filled in. All of our lava sources are there. So this farm is fully functional. And the way that we're going to get the most bang for our buck here is we're actually just going to wait for all of these cauldrons or at least most of them to completely fill up with lava. Uh, that way we're not just standing here like grabbing one bucket and then waiting about 15 cauldrons before the next one comes along. We're going to let this thing fill up completely and then we should be able to run this thing for a little while. But before we can run it, we actually need some storage, which is going to be the next part of this tutorial. Uh, and I was originally going to place it here. Uh, so we may need to rethink where this lever actually goes. It's, that's pretty easy to shift over. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe we'll stand here instead and collect lava from this point. And the reason for that is we are going to be using hoppers to collect our buckets. And if we put hoppers right here, uh, this redstone, when it's active, is going to lock these hoppers. So I don't want that to happen. And there's no redstone right here. I think this is a good spot, and it's honestly smack dab in the middle of the farm. And we're honestly not going to do anything crazy with storage, so I probably won't even show it on camera. We'll just show you the finished product when it's done. Uh, we've built plenty of storage systems on this channel during this series, and I think this is like episode 45, 46, something like that. I don't know. But if you want to see a storage system being built, there are plenty of other videos to check out. I'll try to leave those in the description below, but this isn't going to be anything special. It's just going to be some hoppers feeding uh, lava buckets into our storage area. And then we're also going to try to connect it up to our super smelter as well. So we have an infinite source of fuel going for that. Okay, so it looks like we've got a bunch of lava already in here. There's a few dark spots that are still not quite filled up. Uh, we are going to test this together on camera right now. But before we do, here we go. We got a, a little storage room down here. It's not anything too crazy to look at. It's just a bunch of chests with a bunch of hoppers feeding into them. But this is actually secondary. Uh, these hoppers right here will pick up the lava buckets and carry them over to the super smelter before they will start filling up those chests. But we can go over here and take a look. And you can see a brand new pipeline running down into our super smelter. That one right there is where the lava buckets come from. This one back here is where the bamboo comes from. So we will still have bamboo as a potential option for now. I might disconnect it later, but that's not going to happen today. But let's give it a quick test run and see how it handles. So all we gotta do is flip the lever, stand right here on this grass block for now. We're gonna have to keep an eye out for creepers. We'll enclose this later, but we'll go ahead and point our cursor straight at the cauldrons and hold down the collect button while it burns through all of our buckets. Now this works because we have a full inventory until we get to the last one right here. Uh, we gotta manually throw that in and then we gotta collect more buckets. Make sure to leave the inventory full and rinse and repeat over and over and over until you filled up this entire area with lava. It's absolutely amazing. And all of these cauldrons that have been emptied will go around the horn and they'll potentially refill even before they get back to this spot here. It's fantastic. All right, so let's head back over to our super smelter and take a look-see 
and we should have some lava buckets sitting in the collection area ready to go into our mine carts um and it looks like one mine cart has been dislodged and the other one has uh been disappeared uh we'll have to re repair that before we run it again but let's take a look hey yo Ooh, nice we've already got almost a, a, f a half a double chest plus what's in the hoppers here there's already still some bamboo so we're gonna burn through that before we get going on the lava for our fuel source but that's perfect oh this is gonna be great hey thanks for checking out today's video tutorial i hope you enjoyed it be sure to check out the bedrock guide playlist for more videos just like this and we'll see you next time